here we are this evening and this is quite an important moment that we're celebrating. Um, I just wanted to welcome Prof Noakes, who is our honorary Chief Medical Director, our founder, our mentor, um, and will be giving the keynote speech tonight. Um, just to explain the running order of events tonight, so I'll just give a quick introduction and share with you a couple of things that we're going to be talking about tonight. Prof will be giving a talk, and then we will actually have a graduation. Unfortunately, we don't have hats and rolled certificates to hand over to each of you. We wish that we were in the same room and could be doing that, but maybe, maybe soon, <coughs> who knows. So what... Um, what are we doing here tonight? So, and also just to say welcome to Dr. Neville Wellington, Dr. Hasina Kaji, Tamsin Murphy, the three of you that have with Prof really led and mentored and taught and held the space for this training to happen and for, to, for it to be such an incredible deep immersion. Um, and welcoming all of the partners. John, I see your other, your partners with us, welcome. Thank you for joining. Welcome, Yana from the Noakes Foundation and to each of you that have completed the training. There's Peter's wife driving to another graduation. <laughs> Fantastic, welcome. <laughs> um, so, so each one of you that stepped up and chose to take this brave leap, um, being our first group, we are so grateful to you. Um, I don't know if you knew at the time what you were in for, we didn't know entirely what we were in for, but what we did know was that we have a massive, massive job to do. Um, and we don't always know the answers when we start with a lot of the things and the work that we do, but we do it anyway. Um, so I took a quick snapshot this afternoon from the Worldometer, and it really, really highlights the work that we're doing in the world. So today there are 852 million undernourished people. Today there are 1.7 one, two billion overweight people in the world today. Of that 1.7 billion, 784 million of them are obese. 17,000 people died of hunger today. Um, in the USA today, $342 million was spent on obesity related diseases. And $108 million was spent on weight loss programs in the USA just today. So 5.2 million people, billion people, 5.2 million people, my apologies, have died this year so far of non-communicable diseases. 197,000 have died of just flu and 3.5 million have died of COVID. Um, why does this matter? I'll talk a little bit more about it further on why this matters so very much and why it ties into the work that we do. 3.2 million people have died of cancer this year. Um, the list goes on. The, we, I don't need to tell these figures to you because you know them so well yourselves because of the work that you do. But why it's important is because worldwide obesity has tripled since 1975 and by 2030, 250 million children will be obese. 250 million. Those are our children and our futures and it's not looking great. So NCDs kill 41 million people on average a year, which is 71% of deaths globally. 39% of adults globally are overweight and 13%, so I've talked about those figures already. But what, where it gets really interesting is when we tied into COVID and how COVID-19 death rates are 10 times higher in countries where more than half of the adult population is classified as overweight. And that's come from a recent comprehensive report done by the World Obesity Federation. So. This looks at data from John Hopkins University and WHO data and combined it and said that at the time when the study was published of the two and a half million people that had died at the time due to COVID, 2.2 million of those were in countries where half of the population is classified as overweight and which is defined as a BMI of over 25. So what we know for sure is that COVID has exacerbated the need for the work that you are each doing in your countries, in your communities in the world. And it's become more important than ever. And when we talk about the frontline workers in this pandemic, um, as we have over this last year or so, since it became a global pandemic, we, we, we dance, we, we sing in the streets, we clap out of our windows around the world for people that are putting on masks and going in to fight COVID that are doing the work to you know, turn the tide against COVID. But the way I see it and the way that we know it at the Nutrition Network is that you are the people doing the real work 
and fighting the really, really big battles out there. Um, the battle is NCDs, it's diabetes, it's obesity, it's what's happening in the world, it's the tsunami that's underestimated as the biggest pandemic of our times. Um, so really to just honor each of you and the work that you're going to do into the future in your careers from this point on as profoundly important to the future of humanity, to the future of the success and survival of humanity, even more so since COVID. Um, you are the people that we've been waiting for, each one of you that's chosen to do the certification. We should be singing in the streets to you and to your colleagues and pledging gratitude to each of you for what you've seen so early on and for the fact that you've spotted the crisis long before the rest of healthcare has. Um, so just really taking a massive bow to each of you tonight um, for your courage to do this, to find this work, to go against convention, to do something that's different and brave and that might not be seen and supported by all of the colleagues around you and to find a supportive family and community that understands how important you are and how important you're going to be into the next decades. This work matters so very, very much. And I don't need to tell you that or your people that are listening because you know that. Um, but just know that that is, we see it and that it has to grow, it has to become more important. Um, your passion, each of the, the group of you that are graduating tonight, we have all been absolutely blown away by your knowledge, your passion, your courage, and how you see ahead of the times as pioneers. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. I want to hand over to Prof, who is the first pioneer. Um, and we've been saying this for years. I, I, he saw this long before everyone else. He always has with so many of the big problems in the world and big trends. And Prof, would you like to share? Thank you so much. Thank you, Jane, that was superb. And that just shows why the, the Noakes Foundation Nutrition Network is so lucky to have you. you. You really put it out exactly as we all believe it to be. And I, I, no one could have put it better. Thank you for your passion in describing the problem and the answers. And as I was listening, I, I, was, I was realizing the real problem, this is not the main part of the talk. main part of the talk I'm going to give is for the, for, for the, for the graduates. This is just, a, just an observation. What COVID has taught me is that you can't allow governments to look after your health. And if you see the great divide there is between those who are pushing the government line and those who are perhaps saying we're not getting the whole story, it's the difference between people who believe that they can allow governments to look after their health. So all we have to do is have a vaccine and everything solved. And what you have described there is that not the way it is. If governments were really interested in our health, they would have said, there's one problem here and it's not the virus. It's the visceral obesity. That's all. That's all you have to know. And I've not heard one politician say that. And so we've got this divide in the those people who believe that they can follow government regulations and follow the dietary guidelines and they'll be healthy. And those of us who realize that the last thing you do is listen to governments because they have absolutely no interest in your health. And the only way you can save yourself is to, to read the literature and investigate for yourself. And that's, I'm so proud that in your chat earlier that each of you said that, that you've been challenged to think and to question. And that's what we're all about. And what I've realized is that there are two sciences, and maybe I didn't give this in any of the talks. There's embedded science, and there is there's a science which is independent, and which cannot be controlled by, by governments and by industries. And what we teach, what we are being taught is the embedded science, where there is complete control by industry and governments of what you're being taught and what you have to do. And that is making us unhealthy. And you have to focus on the independent science, which is not controlled by industries. And that's what we've tried to teach. And I was really proud. I think it was Frank who, who said, you know, we don't discriminate against anyone. It doesn't matter who you are. If you want to follow the science, you follow the nutrition network and you'll be fine. And so that, that will be my beginning. So again, I'd like to congratulate the the graduates and each of us who've taught you have been able to express our, our deep respect for you and our thanks 
because you've helped us. You know, we had no clue what we could achieve. And we didn't achieve it because of ourselves. We achieved it because you are special people. So I begin by thanking you for having faith in the Nutrition Network and the courage to do all the courses that allowed you to go this final step. It's not been easy for any of you, I'm sure. You've got hard. You are all employed elsewhere and you had to find the time to do this work. But you're all very resourceful and committed and dedicated. And through your efforts, you've educated us and enriched our lives. And I want to again impress on the global reach. We have one physician from Canada. We have three people from the United States, one from the United Kingdom, one from Australia and one from the Netherlands. And that's from little old Cape Town. You know, we just we sit at the bottom of Africa and we've been able to to attract you. So apologize if I begin on a on a personal note. Uh, but the Noakes Foundation is really was really founded in memory of my father and my mother, and it's part of their legacy. So I get a bit emotional, yeah. And my father, as you know, died from type two diabetes, and he he paid for my education. I was the first Noakes to go to university from from the direct family. And if he hadn't been a successful businessman, I wouldn't have gone to university, and we wouldn't have the Noakes Foundation. And despite my university education, I couldn't help him. And he died this most terrible death. As we know, all patients with type 2 diabetes die if they aren't treated properly. But only when I developed the condition myself did I discover that he died because he wasn't properly managed. And with time, I don't know if it's guilt or whatever, but I realized, you know, I don't want to let anyone see anyone else die in that way. So... The Noakes Foundation exists to help prevent others from suffering the same fate wherever they live. And just to confirm that something that, that Jane said, today there are a quarter of a billion people around the world with type 2 diabetes, a quarter of a billion, and all will die as my father died. And that, that is shocking. And now is a little bit of a side issue which none of you will know about, and I'm often probably not meant to say these things, but... My parents came to Africa after World War II, and would you believe it, they were in search of sugar. <laughs> so now, now you're going to say, what is he talking about? Because I didn't know this until very recently. Well, it actually wasn't sugar, but it was sugary tobacco. And I'll explain that. And this is a long story, but John Cripps will appreciate it. Because like my father, my father was educated. He learned his university education was in a tobacco farm in Canada, which is very close to where Peter and John live. The tobacco region is close to Buffalo and to where John lives. So that now how would that have happened? Anyway, it turns out that <laughs> it turns out that the glucose content of tobacco makes it smokable. If you do not have any glucose or starch to break down in the tobacco, you can't inhale it. And it turns out that Rhodesia was where they were making tobacco, which had enough sugar in it, carbohydrate content, to make it very competitive globally. And that was why my parents went to Rhodesia to purchase that type of tobacco and sell it to the Americans. And it was the success of my father's business that allowed me to, to study medicine. So if it wasn't sugary tobacco, that brought my parents to Africa, it wouldn't, this, we wouldn't be having this meeting today. My father always said to me before he died, incidentally, he, he was aphasic when he died. And that's one of the problems with diabetes. He had a stroke, a final stroke a few weeks before he died and he, we could not speak. And that was, that was tragic for me. So that was, that was my father and that's why I, I, I wear the tie of my father's school tie. And I've just to know that you're all fighting for him as well and fighting for his legacy and the fact that people shouldn't have to die the way he died. Mm -hmm. So the second event that brought tonight together was writing the book, The Real Meal Revolution. That allowed us to form the Noakes Foundation and to appoint our first employee, the irreplaceable, multi-talented Jane Bullen. <laughs> 
And under her astute leadership, the, the Noakes Foundation has, has blossomed. And the team in the Noakes Foundation, I have to say, are unbelievable. If we had millions of dollars to employ people, we wouldn't have got a better team. And that's because these people are committed. It's not the money. They're not there for the money. They're there for the passion to do what they do. Candy spends absolutely extraordinary what she's achieved. You know, the, the Nutrition Network is, she, she is such a key component to it. I cannot tell you how important she is. Hasina, Kaji, and Neville, absolutely unbelievable people. And you heard Hasina speak about how she can change her life and Neville. Neville was practicing low carbs in, in his medical practice long before I got the idea. Tamsin Murphy, Yana Retief, Shannon Mace, and Sabrina van Diemen, all astonishing people who've made this possible. And it's really important, I think, that, that we recognize them. So it's a remarkable collection of motivated, completely self ind selfless individuals who are absolutely not driven by money. They're driven by service to the community. So, you know, what are the things that, that I learned? And I went back to the very first time all of the graduates spoke to us and they, they, they told us why they were there and how they got there. And John told us that he had a family member with, with carcinoma who'd gone low carbs and then he'd read Jason Fung's story and he was interested in macular degeneration and he discovered the general practitioners were not interested. Well, you know, that, that was a theme that went through everyone, that you, the general practitioners weren't interested. Jason Fung has had a huge impact in Canada because all the Canadians have said that, or the North Americans have said Jason was important. And let me tell you that Jason came and spoke at our first Congress in 2015, because I saw him on YouTube about a month before we had the conference. And I said, we have to have Jason here because he was so outspoken and so direct. And he's written three of the best books in, in the low carb movement. So I can understand why people listen to him. Peter told us that his mother and sister had died of type 2 diabetes, and he wanted to work out ways to, to change that, to develop a practice which was able to change that. And he has this incredible practice, which hopefully is going to expand widely. Sue told us that she had discovered she'd helped her a medical condition she had by removing bread, and then she'd come across Jason and Robert Lustig, and she left her practice because she wanted to, to do more. And she's this evening said that, that this, what she learned on the Nutrition Network has made her even more confident and more desirous of doing that. Andrew said that he began keto just a few weeks before the Nutrition Network course started and that his particular symptoms had gone. Frank said that he treats people with sore joints and irritable bowel syndrome, and he'd started introducing the low-carb diet and he'd had impressive results. And he decided it's time to start a new profession of health coaching in his profession as osteopathy. Pauline said that she'd been nursing for 28 years and she saw so much disease, she saw gestational diabetes and poor outcomes, and she wondered what she could do to change that. Well, it's really interesting because I've just been again rereading Gary Taubes' book on, on the case against sugar. And he talks about the reason why diabetes has been spread so quickly through populations is because of the hand on or the epigenetic effects of the mother with diabetes and the child being born with a much greater predisposition to obesity and diabetes. So it only takes two generations to destroy the health of the nation. And he takes the, he takes the example of the Pima Indians where this has happened within two years. And Sherry, who said through her own experiences and practicing with the low, the low carb diet was not acceptable, but yet she was able to help patients in a way that you could never do with the standard, standard medical practice. 
So I think a couple of points stuck out for me. And the first one, we were all sick and we got better on the low-carb diet. And I think that's almost universal from all the people who follow this diet, whether they're doctors or, or nutritionists or whatever. The second point was there's resistance from colleagues. And that's what we eventually have to break. The third point that was we all felt isolated. Everyone was felt isolated. And that came across very, very strongly whenever any of you spoke. So, so what, what has changed or, or what can we do? I think what's happened in the last year or two is people are finally realizing and accepting that insulin resistance is the driver of most of the chronic diseases. And I see that happening all through the, through the media and through the, the medical literature. And again, I come back to books and I was, this book was released yesterday and it, I was fortunate to, to read it and be asked to write a foreword. And it's called Ravenous. And it's interesting. It's the story of Otto Warburg, who in the 1930s said that cancer cells metabolize only glucose. And he came that he believed he had discovered the cause of all cancers. The, the problem was that he was ahead of his time, of course, and then the cancer caused by genetic factors became dominant. When DNA was discovered, DNA was everything. And now in the last five or ten, five or six years, they've realized that genetics is, has a very small part to do with cancer. And what, what Sam Apple does is he reviews the whole history of how Otto Warburg was saying nutrition is very important because if you're eating glucose, you're feeding the cancer cells. And he was just, that wasn't quite true. That was partially true. Then we've gone through the realization that obesity is linked to cancer. Then we've gone through the realization that insulin resistance is linked to cancer. Then because of that, we've realized that carbohydrates are linked to cancer. And more recently, both Gary Taubes and Sam Apple argue that actually it's fructose that's the key driver. And that is the real problem in insulin resistance. And that's, that's really interesting. And, and one of the reasons why we don't think that is because the sugar industry suppressed the sugar story and promoted the, the fat story causing heart disease. And that's why it's never been properly discussed, the role of, of sugar particularly in heart disease and cancer. And there's not been one long-term clinical trial of sugar and long-term outcomes, not one. So the National Institute of Health has literally spent billions of dollars in the last 40 years studying the link between, so, the supposed link between fat and the diet and heart disease, not one cent on cancer, sorry, on sugar and, and heart disease and cancer. And so it's going to be really interesting because perhaps that will break through in the future. So all of you know that there is an underlying condition called insulin resistance and it's causing the major ill health that that was that we all appreciate now and that jane spoke about so we we're on the right track we don't have to worry we know what we're telling you is the truth the doctors who are practicing and not using this diet are in trouble because the patients never get better and it's not only bad for the patient, it's bad for the doctor. And I keep saying this, but there's burnout has never been a higher problem for doctors than it is today. And I just think that ultimately that's going to become a big play, a role player. Doctors are going to realize that we're not helping the patients. We're not helping myself. It's, it's terrible to treat patients and know they're just going to get sicker and sicker and sicker. So I'm hopeful that, that we're at the cusp and that maybe it won't be too long before nutritional, the nutrition is given the position in, in, in our profession that it should be. As Frank said, he said he wished he'd known uh, 10 or 20 years later, earlier, so that he could treat patients with nutrition because he knew nothing of that. He never knew that nutrition was important. So, so thanks again and congratulations. And this is not the end. It's not even the beginning. It's just the start of the beginning. And I'm hoping that we are going to change the world and that what's going to happen is that you're going to go out into the world and be part of this exponential growth in the realization that nutrition is a key driver of ill health and people have to take that responsibility 
and we can't allow governments and the medical profession to dictate to us what we should be eating. The truth is what we have taught you. Thank you very much indeed, and congratulations. Thank you, Prof. Thank you so much. So we're going to ask each of the mentors and trainers from the training to speak next. And we're going to start with the absolutely fabulous, amazing, intelligent Tamsin Murphy. Oh, thank you so much. I, this has been such a privilege to work alongside and mentor such a brilliant group of passionate people. Um, it has reinforced my belief in high caliber evidence-based practitioners rather than merely practitioners that focus on what they are told is is law but isn't actually evidence-based um, practitioners who care about their patients truly care about them are willing to face everyone else for the benefit of their patients which makes these practitioners truly, truly brave. And not only brave, but they're also incredibly competent. And that is something that I, um, that I certainly learned during the certification path. Each and every single one of these graduates are incredibly intelligent, incredibly competent. They are investigative detectives into nutrition and they have the most astounding humility combined with a growth mindset where this thirst for learning, thirst to, to improve them, themselves, improve their knowledge for the benefit of their patients is truly, truly inspiring. And I feel that um, every single one of these graduates, every single one of you have shown me a kind of a glimpse into a world where nutrition and medicine is science and evidence-based because that's what you all are. Um, a world of medicine where there is healthy debate rather than the God in, in white coat, uh, coat kind of scenario, um, where there is individual responsibility and no chips on any shoulders and everyone keen to learn from each other and to improve themselves for the benefit of their patients. I was just blown away by all of the, the quality of the answers, the quality of the assignments, the quality of the oral exams, the knowledge, the passion, and how each and every single one of you brought such high quality stuff to the table, but yet so different from one another and how you could learn from one another to enhance your own knowledge and your own practice. Um, yeah, so I, I, I'm very, very proud to be able to call myself one of your trainers during this process um, and to have learned from every single one of you. So thank you and so much congratulations. <laughs> thank you so much, Tamsin. So next up is the doctor that has the incredible gift of simplifying the most complex things and translating that into patients. And every time from the first time I sat in his room and listened to the way that he explains things to patients, I thought like, can't this guy train other doctors? Like, mm -hmm. what's he doing with patients? He needs to get this across everyone. So Dr. Neville Wellington, thank you so much. Thank you, Jane. And uh, yeah, I really just want to say thank you to this team, to Jane, to Candace, to Maz, Sabrina, Yana, just for your really just setting this up and making this happen. You were incredible. Um, I don't think we could even have begun to think about doing this without your help. And, uh, you know, just your incredible expertise. I mean, I don't know how you put all these computer programs together, Candace, especially you, and kind of find all the things and just dive in and do it it's been incredible and uh, I just want to thank you so much to this team they've really been amazing um, to Prof just thank you so much for your ongoing support and your willingness to be involved even when we have to push you and, and bring you along <laughs> and we love having you as part of our team and and, and look and having you as our, um, our kind of mentor and, and father figure here 
And then Hasina and Tamsin, you know, you, you you were so integral in this course. You know, we couldn't have done this without you. you. Just your willingness to dive in and to sacrifice incredible hours of work to to make the course happen and then to be involved in the course. I really just want to thank you for, for that. And then Andrew, John, Pauline, Frank, Sherry, Sue, and Peter. I, I, all I can say is, wow you guys really made the course you know we couldn't have done it without you we had this course prepared but had we not had the students it would never have happened and uh, you know we just want to thank you i want to thank you really from the bottom of my heart just for, for 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 making time to be part of it for having been so passionate the problem is i realize that i know so little compared to you <laughs> and uh, you know it's just you've just really just stretched my world and uh, i really appreciate all that you've done you you certainly t pushing me out of my comfort zone and peter i'm going to try and be involved more in your in your in your study in your um, trials and, and your, your 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 passion for your data but yeah just give me a, a chance to catch up with you <laughs> um just a few words you know when we first envisaged um, or envisioned the course we we knew we had to set the bar higher it couldn't just be another learning opportunity for students you, you know you, you've watched a lot of videos you've watched a lot of our courses you, you've answered a few questions we knew we, it had to be something that was was going to to stretch you and um, we really wanted to push those who did it we didn't want you just to sit back and, and take in stuff and we wanted you to increase your knowledge and ensure that you knew how to actually research the, the topics and and then to talk amongst yourselves and to feed back the knowledge to yourselves to us to us and to, to the rest of the world actually you know and and so we had to make it quite credible so that the students who pass through could be really accredited and you know we wanted to make sure that actually we were happy to certify you and as your sort of low carb practitioners and we wanted you to understand the current science and to be able to to grow on it and to and to and to, and to research it more and to produce more and 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 i just want to say you've achieved that you you've actually achieved our vision you've achieved what we wanted to do and and as prof said this is a start we're looking forward to 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 more from you we, we're looking forward to more research we hope that you've suddenly it's wet your appetite to do that and to add to the knowledge and to add also to the um just the way that we do this thing. The one thing that I just wanted to say is each of you are just incredible people. And, um, you know, the way that you w are winsome about how you you practice your work and how you care, how easy it is to get on with you. I mean, I think all of you would be, would, would make good friends with me if, if, if I had more time with you. So, so <laughs> thank you. I, you know, you, you, there's a kindness to you as well that I really have enjoyed. And, and I just want to thank you for that. And, I really know that the patients you're going to be looking after, the people you're going to, whose lives you're going to be changing, who then going to change other lives, are, are in such good hands. And uh, just thank you to each of you, um, and especially to those of you really involved in diabetes, like Sherry and Pauline and Peter, and uh, who, who, who obviously in my passion. I, I mean, I've just seen how you've grown, and I just want to really commend you for 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 going forward in this. And I know you're going to have, uh, sort of meet up with some obstacles, but I think with the science behind you now, you can really take them on. So well done again to each one of you. Congratulations. And I'm looking so much so forward to, to the, next, the next steps that you take. Thank you so much, Neville. So ne speaking next is one of the most extraordinary human beings and healers. She's not only a specialist integrative physician, but she also has a practice that is like going into what healing is about. And my wish is that every person could go to Dr. Hasina Kaji's office practice and experience what it's like to really go into an integrative facility and to a doctor that has the heart and the knowledge that she has. So Hasina, thank you so much. Over to you. Thank you so much, Jane, you're so kind. I want to start firstly by thanking Prof. Um, Prof, without you, without you, your walk, um, confident walk through the fire that I know was more difficult than you showed us, you, we, I think none of us would be here because you inspired us to do the difficult thing, to do the brave thing, to, to fight for what we believe in. So I want to start by thanking you. And as you know, that always makes me a little bit emotional as I think it does to all of us. Then I want to thank Jane. Jane, you put us through hell 
honestly. I mean, <laughs> um, you know, Neville, Tamsin, and I, you know, we're busy practitioners, we're parents, and Jane drove us, but with such heart and passion. And she showed us, um, she taught us to be so confident in her direction because whatever she said worked. When she pushed us and we just hated the deadlines and then we got those emails and we still do from Candace. Um, you know, we knew it was for something and we learned, <laughs> look at Neville's face, and we learned to trust in that drive. So Jane, thank you so much for the team that you have created as Prof said. I just wanna reiterate um, your leadership is so deeply appreciated. Thank you to the entire team, to Neville. I know how difficult it must be to run a busy practice, um, to still be so passionate and active in every sphere of your life, somehow still managing to cycle regularly. Thank you for what you bring to the team and for just you know being so supportive and enriching us in your knowledge and your expertise. It's often um, so wonderful to hear from a colleague. I'm so grateful to have a colleague like Neville when you hear a story and, ah, oh, this person reversed and this person's obesity is reversed. It's really amazing. Thank you, Tamsin, for your heartfelt um, uh, knowledge driven by academia and your love and passion for science. Thank you for pushing us um, to read deeper, to question deeper. Thank you to the entire team. Um, Candice, Mas, and Sabrina, um, for all that you do to make this a top class place to work. I'm truly, truly grateful. Mm -hmm. I want to thank each and every one of you, to Sue, to Sherry, to Pauline, ladies first, to John, to Peter, to Andrew uh, in absentia, and to Frank. Without you driving us, you know, I spoke about Jane driving us and the heat turning up. And then we heard that people were saying, when is the certification pathway coming? When is it coming? And that just drove us beyond the level we thought that we could function at. Thank you so much for the level of knowledge that you bring to the party. You went from a name on a page to a face on the screen in the regular journal clubs to actually meeting you, engaging in you and finding a group of crazy people you're truly crazy people because you love reading the, the fine print. You love writing the fine print. You love, I love um, emails that I get from John with um, the latest obesity article. So thank you so much. It makes me feel less alone in this world. I was once an optimistic, bright eyed, bushy tailed young doctor. I thought it was gonna change the world. I landed in my dream job and I became so frustrated, so um, living two different realities. One being immersed in the data, the data set that we all know, but living that data set, meeting these people who were dying, most of my patients with chronic disease, and then being on the other hand, living a reality that I knew was different, trying to burn the candle at both ends. I wanna to touch for a moment on this bizarre reality that I was trying to live and felt like I was failing miserably, just catching a tiny fraction of the people that I felt I could do more for. And Prof mentioned burnout. I think that the th I, I went through burnout and it was that realization that I was failing in my, um, my convictions. I was failing in, 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 in the, the dream that I had. But the reality of this fountain of youth is that very quickly, all of us have realized that we can turn that around. What turned my life around was the reality of uh, carbohydrate, therapeutic carbohydrate restriction. Seeing it happen before my eyes. Just two weeks ago, I met a man, 68 years old, stored at 101 kilos. And within two weeks, his blood pressure is controlled. His um, weight is almost eight kilos down and he suddenly got a verb for life. It's a reality that I pray and hope we can spread across the world so that the community of healthcare providers that are burning out realize that they have direction, that there is the change that we think we're going to see in 20, 30 years time. I truly believe we're seeing it now. And it's this passion that I think is driving us at the Nutrition Network. I also want to mention uh, what Frank said about it's not about the title. It really isn't. Engineers change the face of 
um, obesity medicine, uh, people like Ivo Cummings. Um, and so really it's not about your title. It is about your conviction, living your truth and just reading and reading and learning and, and just following that pathway of being that, un, that ever uh, learning student. So thank you so much to all of you for enriching my life and enriching my world and just giving me that passion that I once had as a bright eyed, bushy tailed medical student and good luck to all of you uh, in your journeys forward. Thank you so much, Hazina. So we're gonna move on to the actual graduation part of the ceremony, which is Prof Noakes is gonna be leading. And in my understanding, the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna spotlight you and Prof's gonna give you <laughs> your certificate which you're going to hold up for a photo and then you're each going to share what you've prepared with us and with the viewers. So prop over to you. Sure well you know I was just I've been lapping up every moment of this graduation and I've realized it's the best graduation I've ever been to. <laughs> and I've been to medical graduations and I've been to graduations that last for two hours and you give out a thousand certificates and okay it's quite meaningful but to have eight people and to have a graduation that's going on for two hours is so amazing how is it possible that we can spend two hours graduating eight people and the answer is because it's so important what you guys are doing is so, so important. And, you know, I don't want to overstate it, but that's how I feel. I've been to many graduations and I've been bored to tears by many of them. And, I, and I've watched people getting PhDs and I think, now what in the world can, is that PhD going to change the world or not? And, and 99 times out of 100, it's no. But I know each of you is going to change your environment and your community in ways that are going to be spectacular. And that's why it's such an amazing graduation. And I can't tell you how much I'm enjoying it. And I hope it never ends because it's, it's a really <laughs> special evening. So thanks again to everyone for organizing it. So now what must I do? Must I call up John or? Sorry, did you say yes, Jane? There we go. So I'd like to introduce John Cripps, MD, BSc, FRCSC Emeritus, Emeritus, is a retired ophthalmologist and assistant professor of surgery. He has spent three decades treating thousands of diabetics, macular degeneration patients, and numerous other pathologies. Understanding the role of insulin resistance in modern diseases of Western civilization has allowed him better skepticism when evaluating medical dogmas. And John is from Canada. So congratulations, John, and congratulations to your wife as well. Nice to see you. <laughs> John always speaks very highly of you in any of our discussions and shares, <laughs> shares the exciting times you've had, particularly on your bicycle, <laughs> your, your tandem bicycle. <laughs> so. So congratulations, John. Have we have we done the official bit? Did we get the picture? Uh, we got the picture. Thank so you. thanks again, John. And I know it's not going to, we haven't finished our relationship. It's only just beginning. And again, thank you for being such a stellar member of this, of this team. It's not every day we have an emeritus professor as one of our, one of our, uh, our students. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tim. Um, for the group before I'll go over, um, I got my wife back up here. <laughs> so, so fellow graduates, mentors, instructors, and support staff, uh, as previously noted, uh, it's been an honor and a pleasure to be part of the first group to become certified. Maths allowed us to bond with colleagues all around the world while sharing our same love of learning and science. So thank you again for developing such an incredible, amazing platform. 
Despite the wonderful group of colleagues I've been afforded the opportunity to work with, none of this would have been possible without the love and support of my wife, Arian, <laughs> a constant <clears throat> force in my universe. Arian challenged me daily to explain some of the difficult topics we studied. Simply put, if I was unable to clearly explain, simplify, or summarize a science question or publication to her, then I probably did not have a clear grasp of the concepts involved. Working by my side for three decades in a large rural ophthalmology solo practice would never have been as rewarding without Arian's gifts of common sense, organization, management and technical skills, and genuine compassion for helping others. For that, I'll be forever grateful. So how did I end up down this rabbit hole of nutrition, wellness, health span, and reawakening of my love for basic science? Well, blame my oldest stepson, Stephen Cooper. Steve came to visit us in Florida three years ago with his wife, Caitlin, and our yeah, always Kathleen. intuitive granddaughter, his wife, Kathleen, and our always intuitive granddaughter, Caitlin. My apologies. He serendipitous had stumbled across some Jason Fung YouTubes while researching a totally unrelated project. We gobbled up hours of YouTube videos. I purchased all of Jason Fung's books and eventually reread all of my Gary Taub's books and wanted to know more. After reading Nutrition and Physical Degeneration by Weston A. Price, I was hooked. Fellow ophthalmologist Chris Kenobi inspired me to delve deeper into the root cause of age-related macular degeneration with his inspiring book, Ancestral Dietary Strategy to Prevent and Treat Macular Degeneration. Hours of great talks with Chris motivated me to pull out my biochemistry textbooks and reawaken a dormant part of my brain. During this time, Steve and Kathleen have kindly watched my enthusiasm grow, often asking me about my latest low-carb adventures. So here I am stuck in my basement through multiple COVID lockdowns, yet relief was awarded to me by a presentation that I spent hundreds of hours researching and presenting on Zoom. Thanks to my other stepson, David, and his Zoom-fluent wife, Melissa, I learned how to work this platform while they listened to my talks on practice sessions on more than one occasion. Thanks to both Dave and Melissa for their support. My grandsons, Joshua and Sam, have also been supportive of my studies as well. My daughter, Kristen, has always been kind, supportive, and expressed interest in my courses. Kristen would often ask me week on end how my studies were coming along. I still fondly remember carrying her in a snuggly all day long in my final year of med school. <laughs> Who would have imagined intending another graduation almost four decades later? Life is awesome and full of surprises. I am immensely proud of all my children and grandchildren's accomplishments. Coming full circle with my science journey, I read The Lore of Nutrition and several other of my books authored by Prof. Tim Noakes. Subsequently, I began taking a multitude of Nutrition Network courses culminating today in the Certified Nutrition Network Practitioner graduation. I'm excited to continue with my educational journey and extremely thankful for the opportunity afforded to me. Thank you again to my family and teachers for being part of this nutritional journey. Thanks very much, Don. That was lovely. So heartfelt. Thank you both. That was amazing. And good luck going forward. We know that the big, it's only just starting and your journey is only going to get more interesting and more exciting. So congratulations to you. Our next graduate is Peter Cummins. Peter is the director at the Plan to Peak, a health and human performance company in Buffalo, in New York, in the United States. He's been coaching athletes and creating outcome-based lifestyle therapy and therapy programs since 1987. He works with individuals who have chronic disease as well as age group and world-class endurance athletes. And I might add that we've looked at some of his results and they're absolutely stunning. So Peter has certainly taught all of us a great deal and his enthusiasm and wisdom and knowledge is just very inspiring. So Peter, thanks for being a party to this. And we're really proud to be associated with you. And I hope that it's, it's just the beginning as with all of the graduates. Thank you, Professor Noakes. Um, meeting you and working with you has been uh, uh, such an honor uh, to, to accomplish this. 
Um, it brings me pride uh, to, to be able to uh, go, go through this process and, uh, and uh, be able to say that I, I've achieved this. Um, I can't thank your staff enough. Um, what you put together for us uh, within the community, the education process, um, the interaction uh, that we were able to create in that uh, online community. Uh, it was just uh, fabulous tools and uh, it really, um, it really was everything that we needed uh, to, to shine. Um, I wanna thank my classmates. Um, uh, you pushed me, you inspired me, you shared with me. Uh, uh, the, uh, the mentors were, were there challenging us and somehow we, uh, we made it through. Uh, that first week was, uh, was a little tough, but uh, a little bit of adjustment and uh, we, were, we were able to handle the workload uh, despite still working full-time jobs, many of us. Um, with that said, I, I, want, I really want to thank my staff. Uh, I've been working with some of the people on my staff now for, for close to a decade. And those outcomes that uh, Professor Noakes mentioned, uh, these people are, are the ones doing that every day. Um, I created an environment and gave them the tools and the support that they needed. But every day, they're the ones that are working with the patients. And as Jane said, this, this is about our community. And it's about one another. And it's about our future. And, and I think we we are at that precipice it's it's the the, the time to change is now and uh we're seeing that and I, I think the outcomes that we're about to share with the world with the help of professor noakes and and uh, the uh the nutrition network and the and the foundation um will continue this conversation and highlight the good work that we're we're doing and lastly i want to thank uh, the love of my life my my wife tracy for for driving me to the <laughs> <laughs> for driving me to the next graduation and putting up with me during all of this. Um, thank, thank you, everyone. And uh, I'm looking forward to, to what's next. Well, thanks, Peter. And thanks, Tracy. And enjoy your graduation ceremony this afternoon. I hope you'll enjoy it as much as we've enjoyed our ceremony. So enjoy yourself, travel safely, get back home safely to both of you. Our next graduand is Dr. Sue Beckers. Sue is a general practitioner in Dorset for over 30 years. She now runs the Good Mood and Food Clinic. She is one of the founding members of the Society for Metabolic Health Practitioners in the United Kingdom. Together with her UK general practice colleagues in the public health collaboration, she is campaigning to get therapeutic carbohydrate restriction recognized for the management of type 2 diabetes in the NHS in the United Kingdom. Sue clearly obviously is from the United Kingdom. So I have a feeling that that the general practitioners in the United Kingdom are closest to converting to carbohydrate restriction as part of management. And it's people like Sue who will be driving that. So it's been an utter privilege to work with you, Sue, and congratulations for what you've achieved. And thank you for what you said earlier this evening that you feel that now you have the confidence because you, we pushed you, we made you write articles, we made you talk about these articles before the group, and you feel now that that's gonna give you the confidence to take that to your, even to more doctors in, in the United Kingdom. So it's been fabulous working with you. <clears throat> and I do hope that that lovely diagram you developed for how high carbohydrate or low carbohydrate diets influent the lipoprotein metabolism will be published and become an iconic piece of work. So it's both working on again. So congratulations. It's been a great privilege working with you. To the Nutrition Network for this accreditation. Um, it's been a chance to reach academic heights, which I quite frankly thought had passed me by even just to be invited on the course was like an acknowledgement of all the learning and striving I've been doing. But the, each course that you produced on the Nutrition Network was 
so relevant, so relevant to the health and well-being issues of the day that I found myself racing through all the courses to get them done as fast as you could put them out. And then how unexpected and amazing for you, your insightful, enlightened body of people to invite me to join to do this practitioner accreditation. It has just been a total honor, but it hasn't been easy. <laughs> Thank you for believing in me and pushing me out of that comfort zone into those dark academic caverns to find the hidden gems of truth that are hidden in a lot of very murky, misguided darkness. Thank you very much to the tutors, to, to Prof, to Hasina, to Neville and Tamsin for challenging us and sharing your insights and wisdom. You have a kindness and a generosity <clears throat> which is really inspiring. And that's to us, but to your patients, it's very, it's very moving. And I think it drives the nutrition network. Thank you to my lovely fellow group mates. You're all inspirational and groundbreaking in your own right. And I've learned so much from being able to discuss with you. Thank you so much to Jane for your direction and all those behind the scenes, Candice, Masuda, Sabrina for sort of constructing this amazing platform that we've had and providing the resources and keeping us informed and thank you to my amazing patients who keep pushing me to give them the answers to their questions because they they're the ones that want to progress they want to get better they want to know how this can be done and I have to try and keep learning to explain it to them. Thank you very much to my lovely family, especially my husband, Martin, who I know is watching on another screen for coping with me, spending so many hours and weeks and months in front of the computer. And, and that culminated with me in the hours before I handed in my paper down on my hands and knees on the floor, taking pictures of origami boats that were carrying lipoproteins <laughs> around my carpet. <laughs> so, from my days as a medical student, I knew that nutrition was a vital key to health and well-being, but sadly, real food doesn't have the same allure as the commerce of big pharma, big medicine and big food. So this nutrition network is so important to set people free of that stranglehold on our health. And now I feel I'm part of an amazing enlightened network. I can see fantastic opportunities for building on this. <clears throat> the final thanks obviously go to the amazing Professor Tim Noakes for your vision, which has enabled all this. I know it's still work in progress, but I am honored to be part of that work. I've met some great people I've been pushed to achieve. I feel believed in, but thank you. Thank you so much. Our pleasure, Sue. Thank you for rising to the challenge, which you did so well. And uh, I know that you're gonna make a massive impact in general practice in the United Kingdom and congratulations. Thank you again for your kind words. I'm not sure if Dr. Andrew Aswari is present. I think he was traveling on an airplane. So I would just introduce him. He's board certified in family medicine by the American Board of Family Medicine. And he earned the designation of fellow from the American Academy of Family Practice in 2005. In February 2019, after a new diagnosis of type 2 diabetes, he changed to a low carbohydrate, high fat way of life and saw immediate results. He also began running shortly thereafter. So he's made a double, double switch in his, in his personal health. So Andrew's obviously in the United States and he, again, we can't congratulate him on graduating with his, with his certification. So we have a video that we're gonna play from Andrew which Ms. Sue is going to share with us. Thank you so much for allowing me to participate in your certification pathway. It has been both an honor and a privilege to be able to interact with those in my group, Frank, Susan, John, Peter, and as well as the mentors and teachers that have led us through this journey. As a family physician in New Jersey, I am very thankful for Prof. Noakes and the Nutrition Network for the education that you have already given to me, not only to help myself, but also my family and my patients as well. 
I'm foremost a clinician, but this certification pathway has allowed me to open up the scientific part of my brain. And I look forward to continue to using it in this space in a manner that will help to progress my profession. My goal is to pay it forward to those who are around me so that we'll be able to progress our profession and to allow it to let go of the traditional mindset of medicine and to start healing diseases at its core. Again, I wanna thank you so much for allowing me to be here. I look forward to working with you all in the near and distant future. God bless, thank you. Thank you so much, Andrew. And best wishes for you in the future, as we know you're going to make a big impact as well. Our next graduate is Frank Zwierik. Now, I'm sure I got this, although I speak Afrikaans, I'm not sure I got that quite right. So, Frank, I apologize for the your surname. <laughs> Frank is an osteopath for over 25 years experience. As an osteopath, he received limited education in nutrition. And this evening he told us he wished he had understood nutrition earlier on, but he's only come across the importance of nutrition in the last two years. Looking into the scientific dietary data, his interest in the low carbohydrate, high fat diet was triggered. He switched to the low carbohydrate, high fat ketogenic diet, combined with intermittent fasting, has, and has been in ketosis for over a year now. No wonder you look so good, Frank. He has implemented nutrition advice in his osteopathic treatment, and as a result, more and more patients are switching to a low-carb, high-fat lifestyle with excellent results. Frank is from the Netherlands. So thanks again, Frank, for your inspiration and for your desire to help the Nutrition Network spread its wings uh, throughout the Europe in, in different ways that you envisage. So congratulations. It's been a huge privilege. and to hear from you and to interact with you. Thank you. Because the privilege is mutual, of course. And before I go into my three minutes, I would like to thank, of course, the entire team and um, my fellow students, but we'll, we'll come to that. I'm a 54 year old low carb osteopath and I'm proudly accepting my certificate as a Nutrition Network practitioner. And I have, like all the others, worked very hard to achieve this, but it was worth every minute. Because to work with such an inspiring team of Nutrition Network and to be taken to another level by a very bright fellow students in Group A was an absolute privilege. I would like to say to every fellow student listening today who is doubting about going into this certification path, go for it. It's a hell of a ride, but you will experience so much support and you will learn more than you could ever imagine. It's a once in a life, lifetime opportunity. And I'm sure that my fellow Nutrition Network practitioner will agree on that. In my three minutes of fame, I would like to share a dream. Yes, I have a dream, <laughs> a dream about more and more well-educated doctors, therapists, dietitians, advising and using therapeutic carbohydrate restriction as a tool to prevent and cure disease and less and less medication is being subscribed. In this dream, the doctor or osteopath or dietitian has to be time efficient to motivate TCR to as many patients as possible. To achieve this, the doctor leaves many tasks like patient follow-up and coaching to a keto coach. This coach is not a therapist, but a specialized coach in assisting and coaching patients during therapeutic carbohydrate reduction and who is registered as an international register for keto coaches. In this dream, Keto Coach is a profession, a new profession. It's well regulated and the coaches are properly trained and certified. To some point, I'm living this second part of the dream at this moment. This is the way I work within my osteopathic practice. This year, I co-founded the company Keto Group, 
where we educate TCR to osteopath and together with Nutrition Network, we're providing training to become a keto coach in the future. With involvement and advice of Nutrition Network, Keto Group is trying to work on an effective and safe professional organization for future keto coaches. So are you a doctor? And do you need a keto coach to take some load of your shoulders? Or maybe um, you are a keto coach and you want to start a coaching practice in cooperation with a doctor or a therapist. Maybe we can help and realize both of these dreams. When we work together and use every person at the optimum of their potential, I'm sure that we can realize this dream together. Bless you all. Well, thanks, Frank. That's a wonderful vision. And I know you've been thinking about this for a long time. And I, let's hope that, well, it can't, will. it will come about because you're the type of person who will drive it to happen. And we'll be able to assist you to do that. So thank you for, for giving us a vision of, of one way that we can advance nutritional advice throughout the world. So thank you for that. Our next graduate is Pauline Swinkles. Pauline has been a registered nurse for 39 years. Her specialities have included midwifery, perioperative nursing, and skin care specialism. She oh. has always had an interest in health and well-being and has found, it, found her training in low-carb nutrition to be pivotal in teaching people how to live a truly healthy life, overcome chronic disease, and help them achieve their health and lifestyle goals. So she was noticing that patients who who were pregnant and had diabetes, produced children who were not healthy. And that motivated her to ask how could she change that. And that brought her to the low carb story. So congratulations, Pauline, for your achievement. It's been fabulous teaching you. And I know that you, from what you've said, already you're making big waves in, in where you are working. So congratulations on that. Thank you so much, Professor Noakes. Um, I'd like to thank all of the staff of Nutrition Network. Um, the amazing team, thank you to uh, Professor Noakes, amazing mentor and teacher, uh, Dr. Hasina and Dr. Neville, you are incredible teachers and I just feel so privileged to have had you as my teachers and mentors and Tamsin, what an amazing, inspiring woman you are and your knowledge is just incredible. I've learned so much from working with you all. I live in Melbourne, Australia, and I've been practicing as a nurse for 39 years. During these years, I've practiced in a variety of specialties as Professor Noakes has already uh, alluded to. I've also done training in fitness instruction and personal training, but I've, and I've always had a passion for wellness and health promotion. During the last few years, I've focused my interests and studies on how to improve health, but I felt disillusioned with the current healthcare system. <sighs> During, uh, this has made me very aware that in the last 39 years, so many things have changed. Four years ago, my partner found a nutrition network while researching and following the story of Professor Noakes and what he had to endure to promote the science and his belief in low carb nutrition. I was listening in the background thinking to myself, this is amazing, I have to know more about this. I looked at all the references and researched more and I knew that this was something that I needed to learn more about. I didn't realize it that at the time, but it was about to change my life. I started working my way through the modules as all my other classmates have done, loving every second of it. The information is so amazing. Knowing that this was what I'd been looking for as my nursing and fitness training and ongoing education didn't even remotely touch on any of this amazing information. I had found the pathway to my future. And as with all matters of the heart, you know when you find the right way. My parents always taught me to find a job that I love to do as my work would occupy a large time of my life. I was naturally drawn to helping people, so nursing seemed the right direction for me. In each of these areas I've worked, I saw disease that should not be there, problems that should not exist, 
uh, or could have been avoided. And I just knew there had to be an easier answer. And I found most of those answers in my training from Nutrition Network. Simple, beautiful, and eloquent. I'm currently working three days a week in the medical aesthetic practice while I build up my low carb practice, which now also occupies three days a week. I've been delighted how quickly my practice has grown, mostly through word of mouth promotion. When the magic happens, people notice and love to talk about it. I've become a foundation member of the Society of Metabolic Health Practitioners, and there are several groups here in Australia, including Low Carb Down Under and more locally here in Melbourne, which I intend to become more involved in and happily volunteer my time. I'm actively, I will actively promote and encourage any nursing and medical staff to enrol in any of the Nutrition Network courses and encourage them to question and not just accept the current medical teachings and standards of practice. I will remind them that research is accelerating at such an incredible rate, they need to stay current and direct them to reliable and non-biased sources of research. There is a time, sorry, this is a time where there is no longer a normal. There is only change, there will be resistance to change, and then there will be more change. Let us lead the way. Thank you so much, Pauline, and I know you shall, you will be leading the way. And thank you for telling us that the treatment is so effective and elegant and simple, and the solutions are simple, which is so true. So congratulations, Pauline, and it's been a, a privilege to be, to have you on the course. And our final graduate is Sherry Shespan, I'm not going to get this one right either, Shespansky. Yeah. Sherry has been a nurse practitioner for who manages patients with 18, 18 years and older for the management of pre-diabetes, type 1 diabetes, and type 2 diabetes. And what she tells us is that she had been managing patients for many years using conventional treatments. And then she stumbled on the low carb, which helped her significantly. And as a consequence, she wanted to introduce it into her practice. But she found it very difficult because there was resistance at every possible level. And that, that's really frustrating. And so she joined the Nutrition Network to try to get around that problem and to, to learn the knowledge that would allow her to, to convince her colleagues that they were on the wrong track and they needed to change. So congratulations, Sherry. And I look forward to hearing what you have to say about your, your evolution on this course. Um, my experience has been wonderful. Um, it has, it was good to hear from Peter that the first week was a little struggle in, um, team A. Um, I also had a little struggle in the first week, um, but got right back up. Amazing research, amazing information I learned. My goal, um, with this whole certification, I'm going to start a program at my diabetes center for low carb. My goal is to, throughout the organization, teach the staff whatever level, low carb, and the benefits of it. I want to thank everyone on Nutrition Network. No matter who you are, each one of you are phenomenal. My whole goal when I started was to find a research-based program for low carb, and I did. It's <laughs> unbelievable uh, from the first module. The favorite module of ethics. Um, every every person needs to watch that module. Experience um, has been a whirlwind. I'm I'm so humbled. I am so humbled. It has just been a starting point for me. I know I need to learn and learn and learn. And it's kind of like we're all on the path. We're all on the same path, maybe in a different area on the path, and um, we all have a different role. Nobody has a better role or a least role. And we have a huge um, thing in front of us um, to do. And um, the one big thing that kind of stood out in this whole program was the first thing that Jane actually said with our group. She said, you need to know what your why is. So I kind of challenge everybody who's listening is what is your why? We have learned so much. We have so much more to um, learn. But at the end of the day is, what is your why? And um, 
my why is the best is the right thing to do. It is. So um, that's it. And I'm very thankful to all of you. Thanks, Sherry, for that from coming right from your heart. We really appreciate that. And the challenge is really important. What is your why? Mm -hmm. And that's critical for all of us to answer. And I, I must make one little story about what is my why? Because I spoke about my father and many of you had wondered, but he made money selling something that's very bad for your health. And he said to me, and this is not really true, but he said, I never did any good for anyone. You must make sure you do good. And I don't believe that he didn't do good for people. He, did, he helped a lot of people. But that was it. So that might be my why, was to try to do as much good for people as I possibly mm -hmm. could, to honor my family. Mm -hmm. so, so thank you again. So again, it's been an amazing, amazing evening. I'm, I just hope it, well, it's got to end, unfortunately. But I want to thank you all again, the whole team. Thank if, you. You know, if you had to, there's an old story in, in South Africa. We had a war some years ago. I'm sure it was the same in the United States and Britain. But they said, these are the guys I would take to the front line with me. And the reality is, this is the team I'd take if I was ever in trouble. And the, because you're just an amazing group with mm -hmm. such potential. And what is your why? The why is just to take the message until we've reversed all of this chronic disease, particularly type 2 diabetes. We've got a quarter of a billion people to get to, so we've got a lot of work to do. So again, thank you very, very much. It's been a special evening. And I'll return back to, to Jane for the closing and the thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Prof. Uh, I always hate speaking after you. It's like, what is there to no. say after, the, <laughs> after you've spoken? <laughs> <laughs> what words are left but of course and each of you this evening um astounding so when we started this journey for those of you that are dialing in or zooming in um, and that haven't met everyone and don't know the full process we had a get together where we each spoke each person spoke and to see the transformation and the growth in each one of you and also to see how you shine compared to how you did a few months ago is an absolutely extraordinary gift um it makes my why so much clearer. Um, so our why, I wanted to talk a little bit before we close about what our why is. For those of you that don't know, the Nutrition Network began from a group that was the Noakes Foundation. Um, we were very much a charitable cause. We'd been looking for years to fund research and programs in the low carbohydrate sector in South Africa. We founded a charity called Eat Better South Africa. Um, and the Nutrition Network was very much founded as a solution to support and fund those programs. So those of you that have done our trainings, and all of you have done almost all of our trainings, um, those of you that are listening and that are going to listen into the future, there's several thousand people that have done our trainings around the world. Those have funded Eat Better South Africa for the last couple of years and the Noakes Foundation. More recently, they're also starting to fund the Society for Metabolic Healthcare Practitioners um, through the sales that are generated there. So this is very much our why, is finding ways to give back. And it comes very, very much from the heart of Prof Tim Noakes and what he's just said which is talking about how he believes that he is going to leave this world a better place. And from the deep, deep well of generosity that he is, is a, as a human being. Um, Prof, we're all here because of you and in deep gratitude and respect yes. for who you are and the life that you've lived with such immense courage, with such immense absolute generosity of knowledge, spirit, time. You are a true hero and a true pioneer. And you came along before us <laughs> in this journey. You've been fighting this battle for a number of years. You were one of the first people to really come out of the low carbohydrate closet, take the brave step as you do with things and really embody it. Um, you reversed your own diabetes. You've changed people's lives all around the world. And we all know that each one of us here, you've changed our lives for the better. So just from myself and all of us, and a massive, a massive bow and thank you to you. And then extending that to the team that we work with and have the gift of being a part of your leadership and your team and your vision. Um, of course, Neville, Hasina, Tamsin, the three of you are extraordinary, extraordinary 
brothers, sisters, comrades on this journey. Uh, so much gratitude for, the, for your knowledge, your intellect, your passion, your love, your generosity as human beings. You have worked very hard. I have driven you. From, we've all driven you further than we should have. But I can see from the pride in this that has been worth it. Um, none of us knew what it was quite what it was going to entail when we started on this path. We know a bit more now. So for each of you that are graduating tonight, just so you know, there were many applicants. As I said, there have been many thousands of people that have done our trainings. Many of those have done all of them and wanted to do this. And we, treat the, we took this particular pathway and step very, very seriously. Um, we spent a lot of time deciding who this first group would be um, and really wanting to make sure that we were being responsible and very, very thorough. So you are here because you were chosen because of the hard work and passion and embodiments that each one of you are too. Um, so welcome to the team. Welcome to this journey. Thank you for being a part of it. So I want to just close by reading a little something that I actually read out a couple of years ago to Prof Noakes. Um, and it's one of my favorite pieces from one of my favorite books, which is called The Tao of Leadership um, by Tao Te Ching, and it's translated by John Hyder into English. And this piece really, really symbolizes for me at the time, and I needed to read it to Prof Noakes because he doesn't as a man always understand the ripple effect of who he is and his generosity in the world and the things that he's done. Um, everywhere that I've been in the world, people have come up to me and told me their stories of how Prof Noakes in some way impacted their lives, whether it was through changing their diet or just giving them something or giving them a piece of knowledge or inspiring them in some extraordinary way. It's immense, his ripple effect. And just as each of you set off on this journey, start to set sail on this new beginning and this new journey that you're about to start on with this new qualification, you too have the most immense capacity wherever you are in the world within your local communities to be aware of the ripple effects that you have in your lives and the absolute immense change that you are possible that you have the capacity to manifest so the ripple effect do you want to be a positive influence in the world first get your own life in order ground yourself in the single principle that your behavior is wholesome and effective if you do that, you will earn respect and be a powerful influence. Your behavior influences others through a simple ripple effect. A ripple effect works because everyone influences everyone else. Powerful people are powerful influences. If your life works, you influence your family. If your family works, your family influences a community. If your community works, your community influences the nation. If your nation work, your nation influences the world. If your world works, the ripple effect spreads throughout the entire cosmos. Remember that your influence begins with you and ripples outward. To be sure that your influence is both potent and wholesome, how, does, how do I know that it works? All growth spreads outwards from a fertile and potent nucleus, and you are the nucleus. So thank you so much, each of you nuclei. Just really, really celebrating, honoring you, honoring each other and wishing you the best. <laughs> <laughs>